Hello and welcome to my HESI math review video part one. I'm going to start with fractions and decimals because those were very heavily tested when I took the exam, which was about a year and a half ago now. It was very fraction heavy and that included both being able to plug them into your calculator and just convert to a simple decimal along with adding fractions, subtracting, multiplying, dividing them, and then also being able to set them up to solve a word problem. So understanding how to cross multiply and cancel things out is very important. So let's just jump right in and get started. So first we have a couple of fractions that we need to convert to decimals. You will be able to use a calculator on the exam. It is a little tricky, at least when I took it, you had to show you had to click on something that said show calculator or view calculator it was on the lower right hand side of my screen but i just recommend that when you start the test you make sure that you can find that calculator and if you can't raise your hand and ask somebody at the test center to come show you how to find that calculator it can be a little tricky because it will collapse and hide and you'll have to click show calculator each time you want to use it so it is a little annoying but the good news is you have a calculator there so the first couple here, 1 half and 4 over 20, if you know them from memory, great. If not, you could plug those into a calculator. So 1 divided by 2 is just 0 0.5. And then 4 divided by 20 could be simplified to 1 over 5, which is the same thing as 0 0.2. And be careful to follow directions. Sometimes it will say to round to the tenths or the hundredths. So just make sure you know where they want you to round to. So in the next problem, we are going to convert and round to the nearest hundredth. So using a calculator, just divide three divided by eight, which equals 0 0.375. And that rounds to 0 0.38. And then five, six can be divided on a calculator and you will get 0 0.833333. And rounding to the nearest hundredth, we are going to round that to 0 0.83. Next, let's work on adding and subtracting fractions. So the important thing to remember here is just that in order to add and subtract, you have to have the same number in the denominator. So in this case, I do, and I can just add straight across. 1 plus 2 is 3, and we keep the denominator the same. Again, in the next example, I have eighths on the bottom, so I can just add straight across five eighths. And both of those were in the most common, um, the most reduced form of the fraction. Next, we have five minus three equals two tenths, but I can reduce this further, and I can reduce this to one over five. Next, I have 12 on the bottom, both sides. So again, I can just subtract straight across three over 12, can that be reduced any further? Yes, it can. There's a common factor there of three, so I can take a three out of both the numerator and denominator and get one over four. Now in the next example, I don't have the same number in the denominator, but three goes into six pretty easily, right? Three times two is six. So I can convert the first half of the fraction by multiplying the top and the bottom by two. Then I can just add straight across, leaving my answer as 5 6, which is also in the most reduced version possible. Next, try these couple of problems. You may want to pause your screen and try them for yourself. Here we have 3 fifths plus 2 tenths, so I need to change 3 fifths into something that has a 10 on the denominator. I'm just going to multiply the top and the bottom by 2, so that leaves me with 6 plus 2 on top, which is 8, leaving 10 in the denominator. You could reduce that further by taking out a 2 from each, and that would leave you with 4 fifths. Next, I don't have a common denominator, and I can't just easily convert a th something with a 3 in the bottom to something with a 4. So the easiest way to do this is to multiply those two numbers together. So 3 times 4 equals 12. Then in order to make the numerators equivalent, I have to multiply the first side by 4 and the second side by 3. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 2 times 3 would be 6. And the reason I'm timesing that by 3 is because I had to multiply 4 in the denominator by 3 to get to 12. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. 
Now I can add straight across and I'm left with 10 over 12. Again, you could reduce that and you could make that five over six. And then in the last example, we have subtraction. I'm going to clean up the screen here a little bit to make it easier to see. And again, I don't have a same denominator on the bottom and two and five cannot easily go into each other. So in order to get something that both numbers can go into, I'm just going to multiply them by each other. So five times two equals 10 and 10 will be my denominator. But now whatever I did to the bottom on each side of the equation, I have to do to the top. So four fifths, in order to get from five to 10, I had to multiply by two. So now I have to multiply four by two and that gives me eight over 10. And on the right side, I had to multiply the two times a five to get to 10. So now I have to multiply the one times five. So now I have eight tenths minus five tenths, and that leaves me with three tenths. Next, let's multiply fractions. The great thing about multiplying fractions is you do not have to have a common denominator. You can just multiply straight across. So in our first example, one times two is two, and two times four is eight. So we have two eighths, which can be reduced to one over four. In my next example, I do have a typo on the screen, so see if you can catch it. Three times one is three, and six times three is 18. What should that reduce to? It should be one over six. I erroneously put one over nine. You could continue doing this where you multiply across. However, you will wind up in some trickier situations where your answer will be a large fraction. And usually the test is going to ask you to reduce that fraction down as much as possible. So I think a better way around this is to cross multiply and see where you can reduce some numbers. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's just continue to work out the problem by doing it the hard old fashioned way where we have to try by hand to see how far we can reduce this. So I know that a three goes into both 24 and 54. That left me with eight over 18. Those are even numbers, so I can take out a two and that leaves me with four ninths. That's the lowest that we can reduce this fraction to. But let's try this a different way. So I've erased my work. Now three is diagonally across from nine and I can reduce that nine to a three and the three would just be a one. I took three out of each. Then I can change the six and the eight by taking out a two from each and making the six a three and the eight a four. Now I can just multiply across. So four times one is four and three times three is nine. So the answer is four nines. Now, wasn't that a lot easier? I think so. Let's try a couple more of those. In our next problem, seven goes evenly into 14 twice. So seven becomes a one and 14 becomes a two. Then four evenly goes into eight twice. So four becomes a one and eight becomes a two. Now we can just multiply straight across, leaving us with one fourth. In our next example, three and nine are across from each other and eight and 24 are across from each other. Three evenly goes into nine three times, making the three a one and the nine becomes a three. Then eight goes into 24 evenly three times, so the eight becomes a one, and the 24 becomes a three. Then we can just multiply straight across, leaving us with one over nine. Next, let's move on to dividing fractions. When you divide fractions, you also don't need a common denominator. But there's one extra step you have to take. When you set these problems up, you're going to rewrite them, for example, here in the first problem as one over two times the reciprocal of two over four, which just means the opposite. So all you do is flip the second part of the equation Multiplying straight across, we're left with four over four, which equals one, obviously. You could also do this the last way I showed you where you make the diagonal numbers reduced by whatever they can evenly divide into themselves. So you could have also done this as two over two equals one. So again, our next problem, four sixteenths 
change the division to a multiplication and then flip the numerator and the denominator in the second half. So now we'll have 4 sixteenths times 4 over 2. You can either multiply straight across and try to reduce after that, or you can do my method of reducing before you multiply. So I'm changing these numbers to their lowest possible number before I multiply across. That way it's less work to do later on. Personally, I think it's easier. So this leaves us with 2 over 4, which can be reduced down to 1 over 2. So our next equation will be set up as 16 over 18 times 3 over 8. Now 3 can go into 18 evenly, and 8 can go into 16 evenly. So 3 becomes a 1, 18 becomes a 6, 8 becomes a 1, and 16 becomes a 2. Now I can just multiply across, and I'm left with 2 sixths, which can be reduced to 1 over 3. Next, we're going to work with improper fractions and mixed numbers, and these did show up on my HESI exam, and I expect that you'll see them as well. So let's start out by just multiplying this problem. 3 times 7 is 21, 4 times 2 is 8, so I'm left with 21 over 8. But how can I rewrite this as a mixed number? The way to do that is to divide 8 into 21, and then that can only go in twice, so 2 times 8 is 16. I'm going to subtract 21 minus 16, left with 5, and then I just put 5 over 8. So that's rewriting this as a mixed number. The answer is 2 and 5 eighths. In the next example, we have a mixed number, and we want to convert it into a proper fraction. I'm going to zoom in a little here so it's a little easier to see. So all I have to do is multiply 8 times 2 and then add the 3. That totals 19, and then we just keep the denominator the same, which is an 8. So I'm left with 19 divided by 8, and that would be our answer. Moving the screen up to the next problem, we can multiply across. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 4 is 8. So now we have an improper fraction that we can convert to a mixed number. Dividing 8 into 15 only goes once. 1 times 8 is 8, so we're going to subtract that, and we are left with 7, and then we just keep our 8 on the bottom as our denominator. So the answer is 1 and 7 eighths. Let me just erase the screen a little here so we have some room to work with. And then in our next problem, we have a mixed number that we'll convert to an improper fraction. So 3 and 2 fifths. We can multiply 5 times 3, and then we add 2, so that gives us 17. Keeping the denominator the same is 5, so our left, we are left with 17 fifths. Next, let's work with some proportions, which are just fractions. There are a couple different ways that you will see this on the HESI exam, and that actually really did trip me up a little bit, so I want to make sure that we cover that. So I'm just starting off with something really easy here. So 1 over 2 is equal to 2 over 4. If you couldn't see that and you didn't know that 1 half was equal to 2 fourths, let's pretend for a second that we just had x over 4. You could cross multiply and set up your problem as 2x equals 1 times 4 to solve for x equals 2. Now take a look at the next problem because this is what tripped me up on the HESI. You'll see this notification as a proportion. And what it's trying to tell you in the middle here is that this means the same way. So 1 is to 2 the same way that 2 is to 4. Fancy way of saying 1 divided by 2 equals 2 over 4. It's not hard to grasp, but when you aren't used to seeing it and it just shows up on a test, it could be a little confusing. So just know that you will see that on the test most likely, or at least I did. Now something important to notice is that there's an equal sign in the middle of these problems. It's not a multiplication sign. So we are not multiplying the top and then multiplying the bottom. We are multiplying diagonally and setting them equal to one another. So eight times x is eight x, 16 times three is 48. And then we are solving for x, x equals 6 here. 
The next problem you'll see is that kind of tricky notation where it's got a bunch of colons. All you have to do is put a division sign where there's one colon and an equal sign where there are two colons. So this would be one divided by four equals x divided by 100. Now we're going to diagonally multiply and set each side equal to one another. So this will become 4x equals 1 times 100, which is just 100. And then we're going to divide each side by 4 to get x by itself, so x equals 25. Try the next couple on your own. I'm not going to talk through the rest of the problems, but I will show you how I did the math. The next video we will pick up with word problems and how to use fractions and proportions to solve word problems that you will see on the HESI. There were a lot of word problems, most of which involved just using some type of fraction to solve. And then the other thing I would mention is things that were common to see on my HESI exam were conversions. So making sure you can convert from kilograms to pounds, tablespoons to ounces, milliliters to ounces, um, just being comfortable working with quarts, pints, gallons, things like that, tablespoons, teaspoons. And there were also some exponent type of problems, and I will cover all that in future videos, but in the next video, I will pick up with word problems. So good luck, everyone, and if this helped you, please give the video a like. Thanks. Bye.